Engineering Radio to our show, Pride and Ownership, The Love for the Job. I'm your host, Chief Rick Lasky, and uh, a couple quickies here before we get going with, our, with, with the rest of our show today. Um, you know, uh, we, we get a lot of great feedback from the show we did with Captain Jay Kuhn from the Sacramento Fire Department, Sacramento, California, about truck company operations and, more importantly, the truck company officer. Uh, Jay's a wealth of information when it comes to the economy and all kinds of things he, he's got you know, an expertise in, but um, great guy, uh, good union uh, member, um, but really, really some great, I mean, there were some, I was taking notes while he was talking, some great stuff he covered about what we look for in, in uh, truck company officers and, and, and just in truck work in general, um, what it takes. Uh, we know everybody's going through some, some bad times right now. If you're not, you're one of the few when it comes to budgets and you know, we're just praying, hoping um, that that those that get hit hard are, or that are getting hard right now, it, it's 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 at a minimum, and uh, we don't lose too many people to layoffs or whatever else. It's, you know, we we all I keep telling people is we've we've survived this kind of thing before. Um, we're, we're, the fire service is tough. We, we just got to hang in there and and be there for each other and, and and try to do as much as we can with as little as we can. To, to make things happen, keep our people safe. That being said, don't miss out on FDIC. Um, FDIC is coming up. If, if you've got it in your budget still, uh, I know here in Louisville they cut ours a little bit, but we ended up uh, scrapping a couple other things to make sure we could send some people to to the conference. Um, it, it's it, you know if, if there's one thing in your life or in your your department or in your your bag of tricks as a chief or train officer that you need to make sure you get your guys to, it's that conference. It's it's the best training in the world. Uh, I said, you know, since I, I'm telling you, since my involvement with it since 1996, I consider it and I call it the greatest show on earth. Uh, there's some other great programs out there, but but FDI sees it, man. It's a happening place and uh, a lot of great stuff, a lot of great instructors. A uh, quick reminder: um, if you want to nominate somebody for either the Courage and Valor Award or for the uh, Train Achievement Award, those nominations are due. The 15th of January. That's coming up really quick here, so make sure you get them in. You can go online. You can do it. They've got them in the magazine. Um, you know, bottom line, if you have any questions on that, uh, contact Chief Bobby Halton um, or Diane Feldman at, at, at uh, Fire Engineering. Uh, I know you can get a hold of Bobby at, at Robert H at Penwell.com. And uh, same thing for Diane. Just change it to Diane F at Penwell.com, and, and they'll get back to you really quick with, with any of that information. So if, you, if you've got someone, um, you know, uh, help it out. You know, while we're talking about the Courage and Valor Fund, remember, this is a fund uh, that, that an award, and, and, you know, a lot of, a lot of credit isn't given. When we had Chief Halton on here about what, what Mr. Biakini, the owner, and, 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 you know, the family that, that owns Penwell uh, as well, you know, and not just Fire Engineering, but all the magazines and books and videos they do with all the different industries that they, they control and run from their end in the publishing industry. Um, this is an incredible thing they do for the fire service. That, you know, and, and, and it's one of those things with, with budgets and else that they don't have to do, but he wants to do. Mr. Biakini wants to do this. And if you've ever been at FDIC and you've seen some of the recipients from widows to firefighters that are injured, they're just firefighters that are plain, just damn heroic, okay? Um, uh, it, it's, it's a committee that, that, you know, you've got the Ray and, and uh, uh, Ray's, Ray's kids, uh, Ray Downey's kids, Chuck and Joe, uh, as part of the committee, they, they, they award the award that, that day, uh, along with Mr. Biakini and Chief Halton. I'm telling you, um, if you, if you have it in your heart, if you're, if you're looking for something to donate some funds to, I'll tell you right now, anybody that purchases, I've said along, the Pride and Ownership DVD of the keynote I did, uh, not the audio book, but the keynote, um, the DVD, uh, the proceeds go to the Courage of Valor Fund. I, 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 that's it. When, when Penwell first asked about doing that, when Bobby first asked about doing it, we said, well, what are we going to do with the royalties? We said, let's make it easy. Um, send it to the, to, the, to the Ray Downey Courage and the Chief Ray Downey Courage of Valor Fund. Um, I know Bobby Halt, Chief Halton, does that pretty much with all his classes. Uh, I know uh, Billy Goldfeder puts throw some money that way with some of some of the royalties from I think uh, uh, the beat goes on and just you know there's a lot of great people helping. It's an incredible fund that definitely goes to the right people. So if you can make that happen, uh, please do. Okay. Um, again, you know, hang in there. You know, budget wise and everything else. You know, a few years from now, hopefully we'll be sitting there talking about, man, we made it through that. You know, it hurt and it really hurt, but. 
we, we just got to all stick together right now, folks, and, and, and make sure we're taking care of our people. And lastly, before we move on here, I just want to make sure everybody knows, a lot of people have been asking about the Keeping Tradition Alive Symposium we're going to host right here in Louisville. That's the Honor Guard and Pipes and Drums Symposium uh, that we host right here in Louisville. We host the inaugural one, the first one, obviously, last year in May. Uh, this one is May 14th and 15th of 2009. It's an incredible, incredible, incredible conference. Uh, we'll talk more about this with next show, but mark those dates down, May 14th and 15th. The National Honor Guard Academy is running their academy the week of, um, and, it, and I'm sure you can get that information from their website on how to get registered for that. Uh, the two-day program we're going to have is, is going to be better than it was last year. Those that were there are going to shake their heads and say, no, you can't do it. That's impossible. Just just watch, folks. Uh, brothers and sisters, it, it's going to be better than last year's. The city has embraced it. They they provide us with the budget. We're going to do the best thing we can for you, and um, and, and 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 truly uh, work towards keeping tradition alive. So May 14 to 15. If you're looking to register, you can go to um, the Louisville Fire Department Pipes and Drums website, which is lfdpipesanddrums.com, and the registration form is right there, and and uh, we can get you going. So enough about that, all right? We we got that uh, some good information out of the way there. Hey, I I, I you know thought of of of, of uh, having uh, one of my buddies on the show today, and um, uh, Scott Thompson is uh, our division chief over training and health and safety here in Louisville. Uh, well, actually, um, that stops as of uh, the thirty first, New Year's Eve. Um, Scott has taken a position of uh, fire chief with the colony. Uh, Texas. It's, it's a city just to the east, kind of northeast of Louisville, right next to us. Um, great department, growing department, uh, great group of folks. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, if you don't know Scott, you haven't been to any of the national programs. If, you, if you've been there, you've been through his programs and his classes. They're highly regarded. I want to talk about those, too. So you see him at FDIC. So you see him all over the country teaching. Um, you know, he, he's, he's a big-time supporter of the Fool's. Um, of, of the brothers and sisters that are out there, and uh, I, I want to get him on the show and, and talk about his future, what he sees in his department, but also about uh, you know training the fire service because that that's where his heart and soul is. Like, like all of us that do this, uh, is is training and keeping our firefighters safe. With that, uh, Scott Thompson, Scotty, welcome to the show, buddy. Thanks, boss. Thanks for having me on. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm, but I, you know, it's kind of fun walking in this morning, and uh, first thing you see is uh, you know. Chiefs from other departments and guys coming and, and having cake and coffee with you. It's kind of funny because you're right next door. It's not like you're moving to Connecticut, um, but still they want to come and wish you well, and I think that's a, a tip of the hat to you, buddy. Hey, you know, you're, 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 moving, you're moving right next door, but just for a few minutes, I, I want to be able to talk about the colony and the firefighters there. Um, the, I, I'm telling you, buddy, I'm, I'm excited that you're going there. I've said it before, I don't know who I'm more excited for, just like I did for Curtis Burt when he took the job in Lake Cities. I don't know if I'm more excited for the guys or for you, Scott, because there's some incredible people there. Well, Chief, they are, and, and you know, it, it made the decision a little easier. I love it here, and it was a tough decision, but we've worked with those guys. we fought a lot of fire with them. They're, they're great guys. They, they love the job. There's some pride over there, and, and, and it's a good organization. I'm looking very forward to it and, and being able to be a part of that organization and hopefully you know, continue to strengthen the relationship between the colony and Louisville and, and make that even bigger and better than it already is. Well, you, you know, that's, that's a no-brainer from here, buddy. And, and, and just everybody around you, I mean, look, I mean, we're blessed. We were talking with uh, Chief Joe Florentino, who is the Department to the North here, um, you know, Chief Jerry Duffield, who's a battalion chief of Farmers Branch, the chief of Salina, Texas. That whole, we were just kind of bragging again on how well we work together. Because I'm telling you, bud, and you've seen it, you said it there. Uh, whether it's Captain Tab Bradbury, Tab's uh, one of the senior captains there, if not the senior. His dad was the first paid chief in Louisville, a great, great man. Um, I mean, you've got a guy like that, you've got people like that, Scott, who are senior, who are experienced, who've seen a lot of fire. You got some young guys, some brand new guys that are full of, full of you know energy and enthusiasm and everything in between. Um, I, I get excited when I, you know, there's departments around us like Capel, Flower Mall, Lake City, the Holland Village, and all them, Grapevine. When they show up at a fire, I get excited, buddy. But I really get excited when the guys from the county show up. Well, and, and you're exactly right, Chief. And, and the change that's occurred in this area in the last seven or eight years has been unbelievable. And, and to be a part of that and, and go over to the colony and be a part of that organization with, with those great guys like you mentioned, I mean, 
Uh, Van Weese, who's the uh, uh, assistant chief over there in the operations, has been with the organization for a long time. They've got some great young lieutenants that are very involved in teaching up the college. Uh, Shannon Stevens, uh, you know, guys that are, are they love the job and they want to see themselves as well as the organization reach their full potential. And that is very exciting. I, I, it's going to be a great challenge, but at the same time, I think it's going to be a very rewarding one. Well, like I said, hats off to you, buddy. You're going to a great place with some some great folks, bud, and uh, I'm excited for you. And um, you know, like I said, good good folks there, and um, uh, good people to fight fires with. I'd, I'd crawl down any hallway with them. Hey, um, what kind of stuff? And I just want to remind some folks because I, I get people all the time, Scott, that that have sat through your programs at FDIC. Um, you got anything going this year there? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, a new course entitled it's not just about training it's about learning and and it's going to be i I just did in new jersey but it'll be the first time at fdic and it's going to kind of pick up where uh, the one i did last year ready or not it's time to train kind of kind of left off so hopefully these will complement uh each other nicely um and in the past um i know you you've done one with uh chief Stu grant and um a couple but the, the one that really seemed Again, like you said, is the is it the ready or not? I mean, I just I mean, there are so many people that just came out. I mean, it's one of those few that they just everybody came out and said it was a great program. So obviously, there's some great information uh, that that you're doing with that, and um, that's one of those that even if you don't, that's that's one that's got to come back. You know, that that one in the future we got to look at maybe um, bringing back and you know catch the next round of, of training officers and, and and officers and at that that need to get that. Um, I'm going to ask you now, Chief Thompson, okay, you're leaving us, and we're going to be filling your position here. Um, tell me, you, you know, you're, you're hiring a training chief for the, for the colony, or we're, we're filling your position here. Um, what, what kind of person, give me the personality traits, what kind of person do, do we need to put in here, or should we look for for Louisville for training, or for the colony? Well, Chief, and, and you know, you, you said it best on day one with me. The first thing is they have to understand it's, it's all about taking care of the guys. That is the number one priority. It can't be about the person filling the position. It has to be about the Louisville Fire Department or the Colony Fire Department. I, I think next is to understand the responsibility that you have to the organization. To I mean, the, the training guy, in my opinion, is is responsible for making sure that that the troops are ready to go out and safely uh, do the job, and, and I take that very seriously. I mean, obviously, you got to be very passionate about it, but you have to be an un- have an understanding of the job. You can't just sit in your office and and produce canned programs and throw them out there and say, "Here, do this, do that." You have to really have a grasp for what the guys are doing, the equipment they have to work with, uh, know a little bit about each person and what their their likes are and dislikes, but. I think most of all is is being able to put yourself back in the firehouse and understand, you know, what goes on during the day. You have to really build a relationship with the company officer and the battalion chief because I'll tell you, if they don't buy into what you're trying to do, it's not going to happen. And a lot of training guys think they got these great programs, but they get to the firehouse and they fall on their face because they're not out there forming these relationships with these company officers, these battalion chiefs, and, and even the, the, the informal leaders in the firehouse to support the things that are trying to get done. And then after that, it's really just getting very, very good at the basics. I think if you can, and, and, you know, we've heard that over the years, but if you can really master the basics and we have our big five, I think the well, rest if, falls into place. Real quick, explain what the big five are for those are for our listeners that may not be aware of that. Well, that's something, you know, you and I, when we started uh, really changing the training culture here, I mean, when we went from very little training now to training every day, but in the change of that culture, we sat down and we said, what's really important? We want our guys to master, not just be good at, but master pulling hose, leading out with lines. I mean, that's that's pretty important to what we do. Throwing ladders, being able to do that quickly, proficiently. If we got to get you know a brother sister off the second floor, we, we're able to do that. Being intimately familiar with our our SCBA and and our, our portable radios. Um, being very proficient at firefighter survival and rescue skills. Uh, you know, any level of the organization could call on that, from the newest guy to the most senior. And then putting it all together with kind of a hands-on um, evaluation of those things we trained on. So those five things are really, we hit those quarterly, if not more. And after, i got to say, you know, three or four years, I say our guys are as, as good as anybody as, as doing those things. And, and the rest seems to fall into place on the fire ground when you're comfortable doing those basic things that, that you got to do. Well, and Scott, and I, I've been there, I mean, I was a training chief for a long time, and, and the, the, the challenges you have, 
to meet all the requirements of all the standards. I mean, you've got hazmat CE, you've got technical rusty stuff, weapons of mass destruction, you've got your, your EMS CE, plus all, you know, and, and you and I have talked about this. I know we both agree, and I'm probably going to get slapped by, by somebody out there, but I really don't care. I'm, I'm, you know me, I'm just going to say it like it is. I really don't care when's the last time our guys threw salvage covers or built chutes, okay? If we can fit that in, we will. And we have, and we will train on that. But you're right. I would rather know that they can lead out and stretch a line. Um, I want to know that they can throw ladders, that they can, they can you know, do, do, do something with their air pack, and, that, you know, they can get someone out. Just like you said, the, the down and dirty stuff they need, if we're going to prioritize, like you said, I mean, let's get good at the stuff that keeps us alive. Now, again, you, you know, don't get me wrong, we're, you know, better than anybody what we are customer service-wise and what comes to, you know, property conservation and salvage and all that. Our guys are incredible at protecting folks and protecting their property. And some of the leaders with the programs here, what are after the fire program. But, again, when it comes to training, and that's, I guess my question, how do you, fit, I mean, how, do, how does a training officer fit in, Scott, everything that they're supposed to do? I mean, you've got the commission breathing down your neck, you know, here, you, you know, other people have their fire marshal's office, whatever, you've got ISO leaning over another shoulder looking at you. Scott, how does one put all that together? How do you prioritize? Well, Chief, I think the first thing is to use the old corporate cliche is you got to have a vision. A lot of training officers don't know what the end product looks like, and I think you got to start with the end in mind, you know, to use another Covey term, and, and work towards something. I mean, once you get a system in place, a plan, and, and you build those things into your plan. Uh, here in Louisville, we know what we're doing the first Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, uh, the first Saturday, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's all laid out so that the guys understand it. We're able to just then plug in those things that we have to do. And it doesn't cost any money. What it does is, is sitting down with a plan, having a vision, developing a plan, getting your company officer to buy into that, and then just plugging in those things that either we have to get done yearly or, as, you know, if we, as we've done, on a fire, we see something that needs to be addressed. We plug that into the next month program, and we take care of it instead of letting it, you know, hang out there and 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 not get corrected. So really, once the plan and the program is in place, it's it's very easy just to, to plug those things in, make sure you meet the requirements, but also make sure that we're meeting the needs of the day to day operations, and and getting the feedback in there and making sure the guys are not we're not reinforcing bad habits by allowing things to continue to go uh, incorrectly. Well, and Scott, you said something earlier about establishing those relationships with with the battalion chiefs or shift commanders and chiefs. You know, the training position, the train officer's position, should be one of punishment. Just like it, it, it upsets me so much, it makes my teeth itch that there are fire chiefs out there that move people to fire prevention as a punishment or to bury someone or hide them. When I mean, we've got to change that whole culture in our country where fire prevention has to. We, we've got to we've got to wake up and realize that that is the key to, to how successful we're going to be with a lot of stuff we do is preventing this stuff from preparing for it in the first place. But you, you couple that with training, th- th- there's the backbone right there. It should be a position of punishment, but it takes someone, Scott, like yourself, doesn't it, that you, you understand and you know you've got to be flexible sometimes. The battalion chiefs, there's other projects. Absolutely. Up, right? I mean, you know, sometimes – but. Sometimes you got to stand your ground, don't you, and say, "Look, I know, you know, I mean, you're, you're flexible, but you got to stand your ground when it comes to getting the train out to the guys, don't you?" Yes, you do, Chief, and and you have to make it part of the culture. I honestly believe, and Jerry Wells was telling me this the other day. Our guys now don't even know when they're training. I mean, it's 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 expected. It's part of the daily routine, and and they take it, they embrace it, and they do it. But you've got to get to that point, and you have to make it part of the culture. And you have to make it something that's that's the guys see the value of it. And like you say, not a punishment, not, oh, gosh, we've got to go down to the drill field for our two hours of beating. It's we're going to go down to the drill field. The time is going to be well spent. We're going to learn something. We're going to come away a little bit more confident and better at doing our job. And if, if you keep that at the forefront, I think you'll have a much easier time getting that buy-in. And, and yeah, you, you've got to make sure the guys put the importance on it that it requires. And, it takes a little while to get there. You said another point about bringing these guys in temporarily. It, it took me about 18 months to establish a program. If you assign somebody to training for two years for a punishment or three years and then they're out the door and you bring somebody else in, you're never going to get that continuity in your training. You're going to be doing the same things over and over again, and you're never going to have an established, consistent program. And it can't be someone, Scott, 
that just wants to hang some gold on their collar. This has to be someone that has that passion, right, for teaching people. The, the, you know, the, 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 I mean, you know, what, tell me, what, how does it feel, Scott, to take a brand-new rookie firefighter, Louisville, get him through the door, and, you know, and you, you've been here long enough to sit there and go, seven years later or so, go, I remember when he walked in the door, look what we've done, look how far he or she's come. You know what I'm saying? There, there, you've got to have, don't you have to have that passion to want to teach and mentor people in the first place? Absolutely. Uh, you gotta, you got to love the guys, you got to love the job, and you've got to love the ability to give back what's been given to me. I mean, I've learned tons from you and others I've worked with, and I feel an obligation to, to give that back to the next generation. And when you, like you say, you see a young guy come in and he's a little nervous on the engine, and then three or four or five years later he's, he's on the truck and he's doing truck work and he's confident and he's got purpose and he understands what he's doing, and then he wants to mentor the next guy. That's part of that culture, that learning culture, where everybody really is, is teaching or mentoring all the time they spend in the firehouse. And I, I think we have that here. We, you know, Great training can occur around the kitchen table if you've got guys that understand what they're doing and they want to share their knowledge. And, and, and that, that's the most satisfying thing to me. And I think the best type of training that can really occur is when the guys have that ownership and, and they're, they're training because they want it and, and they want others to learn and they mentor. And, and that's a beautiful thing. Well, and I take a true testament to, to what you're talking about and having a good training program is, is you know, you know, when, when the commission or your fire marshal's office, whoever the governing body is over that, comes in and you know, plays that surprise visit to do their inspection, you know, when you go, yeah, ha- have at it, man, what do you want? When, you know, when, you, when you've got that confidence level that you know you're doing things right, um, it makes things easy. But you hear, And I want to play off another thing you said, Scott. You mentioned mentoring, and I mentioned it. I mean, I know you're, when it comes to leadership and, and developing leaders and future leaders, I know what a great job you do and what you've done with our folks. As a training officer, let's talk, we're talking training, training, training here. We're talking the training officer. Um, how important is mentoring? I mean, you, you, you people call you from all over the country to get our stuff on mentoring here. Does it, t- does it cost a lot of money to have a good mentoring program? That's my first question. No, it, it really doesn't cost anything. Now, we've taken our program, I guess, to the next level where we have, you know, a little bit of overtime involved when we, we add some additional people to companies. But to have a good, solid mentoring program like our mentoring book, our new hire, uh, or the initial stage of our new hire mentoring program, no, it, it doesn't cost any money, to be honest with you. Well, and, and how key is that? I mean, mentoring is, that's like, it's that's the... I mean, you're, you're, you're building that foundation for that firefighter. Um, I mean, he or she, that, that's, you're going to look at their future and go, this is because every, every single one, we've said this for years, every single young firefighter that passes through your life takes part of you with them, and, and that's part of what you taught them as well. What, what do you want them to take, you know, uh, when it comes that way? Um, you know, and and, and they, they come and they flash through your life that, that quickly. It's, it's, it's tough. I mean, it, it's hard. Um, you know, we were talking about the challenges, um, you know, and again, I mean, I guess it, it, it's a yearly planning thing. I mean, uh, we're talking hazmat, we're talking tech rescue, dive training, part of that for us, and everything else. Um, what I mean, is, it, is makeup, drill, are makeup drills important? What do you do to make sure that everybody truly is meeting what you want them to do when it comes to the training calendar and hours? Well, what we do, Chief, is we kind of overdo it. We, we we go beyond the minimums, and that way you don't really have to worry about as much, much about makeup because you know there's going to be another drill added in above the minimum where we're going to catch those guys. And sometimes at the end of the year we have to come back and, and grab a few. But, but we're constantly doing it, and we're far exceeding the minimum standards for the commission or for our ISO. I mean, we have guys that are, are getting 400 hours of training a year, and it's good quality training. It's it's not reading a magazine. It's it's not you know. Counting. I said it's a bad thing if they're reading fire engineering. No 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 no, no not at all. Thing. And thank you for that. But <laughs> but but it's it's not it's not the the foundation. It's a critical part of our training regime. But it's it's not all that exists there. And and I, yeah, thank you for correcting me on that. But a lot of departments, you know, if, if somebody reads an article, that goes down as the day's training. That should be a part of it, but it shouldn't be all of it. I was, I was having fun with that because, you know, Chief Halton just X'd us off coming after yeah. that. Yeah, this program has been temporarily interrupted. <laughs> oh. um, but but, but, but seri- and I, and you, here, here's another thing I want to play off of. You mentioned a magazine. I've said for years 
you know, and, and here we're at, we're at budget crunches, we're at all kinds of tough, you know, times, budget-wise and everything. You know, you know what it, what it takes and, and how possible it is to make something out of nothing money-wise, that it doesn't, so, to really train your people doesn't take millions of dollars. I mean, I've sat down, Scott, with, with fire engineering, I've laid it on the table, and I've said, look at the picture, and we've talked for an hour on tactics and strategy on the magazine cover itself without even getting to the inside, you know, the pages that follow with all the information that's in there, just on the cover. And I'm not saying, that you've heard me say before, well, this guy didn't have his gloves on or this guy didn't have his, you know, I'm not talking about No, that. you're reading the smoke. Yeah. What, look at the building construction. And, and you're exactly right, boss. And that's part of that, that kitchen table training that I think is the highest level of training, really, when you can take a picture like a cover fire engineering magazine and sit down and discuss it and, and, and have some good critical look at that, that that's you're really there when that's going on. It's outside of what I require. It's the guys sitting down wanting to learn and make themselves better, and that that's about as, as good a training as you can really get in your firehouse. Well, and I mentioned in, in the, the Pride Ownership book, in fact, it's one of the, I think, 165 articles that I owe Bobby, and one of them is the, the line of duty death um, book report drill that you know we did at another place, and then we, we, I, we started doing it here, um, I mean, virtually, it's just a matter of the guys, right, sitting down and putting about a, well, we tell them a minimum of a 20-minute presentation together. A- explain to our listeners, Scott, um, wh- when you hand that off, when you get, how does it, how does that work? Because this is an incredible, incredible drill that every single fire department should be doing out there. You're right, team. First of all, it doesn't cost anything. But, you know, when we first started talking about this, we thought it was going to kind of be a temporary thing. Uh-huh. And and now, I mean, we've been going on doing it for four years now. And what we're starting to see, and there's some of the things you predicted, is, is number one, yes, the guys developed the program. I, I give them an outline, and I try to give them as much information and direction as I can to help them make it a little easier. But they have ownership in it. What they do is they research a, a line of duty death, and, and we, we – look at that very positively we're not trying to throw rocks or talk negatively we're saying how can the city of Louisville fire department learn from these unfortunate events they put together a program they present it to their shifts uh, we ask them to look at the critical factors and then tie it into our city and and you know just to, to talk for a second but one of our captains went went down to the city of Dallas and 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 got three uh, lieutenants that were um, at the golden pheasant fire and brought them to the city of Louisville and presented their story, and, and I think the future, we, we talk a little bit about mentoring, the future of fire service training is truly mentoring and making training personal. That's how we're going to get through oh, you know all these that's generations. A, Scott, that's a great way to say it, buddy. You know what? <laughs> making training personal. You have to do that, and that's how you're going to get a get generation X, Y, Z, the guys that have been here forever, where they can have that personal attachment and that's what sticks in their mind. And, I think and, you just came up with a, 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 a buddy. I didn't interrupt you, but I think you came up with a theme or a motto for one of Bobby's future FDICs, making training, making training personal. Well, that's what my right. program this year is all about, boss, and it's, it's working on emotional <laughs> intelligence and not just IQ. I love you guys. <laughs> for those of you that haven't caught on yet, Chief Bobby Halton's um, uh, with us today, kind of sitting back in a chair, Smiling and, and listening, but 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 I mean, and, and well, and let me—he's sitting right here, Scott Bobby. I mean, you're passionate about training. I mean, what a great—I'm going to use it. I'm going to tell people, you know, what's, <laughs> hey, you know, Scott Thompson just said it. You know, make make training personal. When you you always tell people, take an interest, be serious about your training, and you know, take it. You know, it's it, take care of your brothers and sisters, do the right thing, do what's right. Hey, you know, you know, train as if your life depends on because it does. All the great sayings that are out there. You know what? Make training personal. Yeah, I love it, Scott. That's a beautiful line, and I don't want to take up any of Scotty's time. And, and uh, just on behalf of Fire Engineering, and, and I know we gave you a shout on our Week in Review, but, Scott, we're, we're so proud to be associated with you, and uh, we've known Scott for many, many years, and uh, Scott's been a great personal friend, but uh, even more importantly, his contributions to the fire service um, go back, almost 15, 20 years. He's been educating and training and, and teaching. And, and to you, Scott, it, it's always been personal. And I think that that's come across in, in how you've conducted yourself and how you've uh, built your reputation and how you've 
uh, managed your affairs in, in, in terms of the fire service. And um, it's just a tremendous, tremendous pleasure to have uh, the opportunity to have Rick podcasting with you and on Fire Engineering Radio and talking about your future and, and what tremendous insight. Uh, if, if, if our training isn't personal, it's worthless. If it doesn't, if it doesn't connect to you in, in a one-on-one -on -one meaningful way, it's worthless. If it's not personal, what is it? Life, I always hated that line where people say, oh, it's, it's not personal, it's business. That, that's a guy who's just afraid to tell you he's screwing you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, everything is personal, and your training has to be probably the most intense personal relationship you have with your survival is how you approach your training. What a great Absolutely. one. Oh, it, Rick and I are going to steal this one, buddy. <laughs> I am <laughs> telling you. Well, he's going to be at FTIC this year you know, promoting that program. What's the title program again, Scott? It's uh, it's not just about training, it's about learning, and it's taking it, uh, just like we said, to that next level to where we create those mental markers that stick with you for for your career. And, and Bobby, I just want to say thank you. You're very kind, and, and thank you for allowing me to be a part of FDIC. And, and Chief Lasky, thank you for getting me involved in that. That's probably, uh, I've learned as much from that as, as anything else, so I, th I thank both of you for that opportunity. Well, and, and you don't you don't have to thank us, Scott. You're, a, you're an incredible member of the American Fire Service, and Rick and I will both tell that we don't, uh, people, we don't select people to come to FDIC. They select themselves uh, by being the best, the brightest, the most dedicated. And I'll, I'll let you get back with Ricky. I don't want to uh, chew up your airtime. But just remember that if you want to hear about Scott's class, you can go to FDIC.com, click on In Their Own Words, and listen to Scott and our other instructors describe their classes in their own words. Because oftentimes, there's just not enough space in print to describe the dynamics of these classes and the and the incredible amount of work that these men and women who are teaching for us have put into these programs. So I really encourage you to go to In Their Own Words, click on uh, Scotty's class, and listen to Scotty describe the class to you, uh, uh, you know, f from the heart. And um, we, we hope that that helps you make your decisions at FDIC. And we know we often get the complaint that there's too much going on, but <laughs> this year we're only bringing in 590 instructors, we're only doing 180 <laughs> classes, we're only doing... 23 workshops, and we're only doing, I mean, 38 workshops and 22 hands-on classes. So we know there's not a lot of class, you know, a lot of decisions to make there. <laughs> <laughs> what a horrible thing to have. Oh, what a shameless plug, too. What God, a huckster, huh? To have a conference that you, you have a hard time picking what you want to go to. And, and what a great way... Um, uh, you know, guys, to to I've always I've had a hard time. I, I'm, I'm I work for you, Bobby, and there's been times I've went to sit in on a class and went, God, this isn't really how it was written. Well, you know what? What a great way here. Tell us what you're going to be teaching. What are you going to be doing in that program? And get it right from the instructors, you know, their, their mouths as to what they're going to be doing. So yeah, we we're very proud of doing that. It's uh, the first conference I believe ever that's that's done something like that. And I haven't completed everyone's uh, podcast yet, but. Uh, I am doing it personally, and um, it's important to me, and it should be important to uh, to you as as a as a fellow student, just like I am, to hear what these uh, men and women believe they're uh, coming to uh, share with us. And it's fascinating to hear the the depth of research and the depth of uh, commitment that everybody at FDIC has. And and Scotty, to say that the the future of training is making your training personal. Um, I believe that is our theme for next year. That, that's uh, make it personal. Uh, it's got to be. And, and again, our congratulations to you. Boy, the colony is the benefit, the greater you know, the Dallas metro area there. The, the, I guess it's called the Crest. Rick, is that correct? Uh, metro, metro Crest. Yeah. Me metro Crest Cities has got some of the finest officers uh, running their organizations and, and working in their organizations, you know, from Daryl and... and uh, Ricky and uh, just everybody, and, and now Scotty and Curtis and, and you know Mark and just the whole crowd that's up there. Uh, um, uh, well, we're a little pissed amazing. at the county, but we, you know, I mean, they, they really want to take Scott from us. I guess we, you know, I mean, that's that's all right. Well, I mean, Scotty, get back to telling us about training. I'm gonna let you guys go. <laughs> I, I'm listening in. So any more cracks about reading magazines, Scott? And this, this show's over, baby. All right, brother. Get back to it, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. But. <laughs> um, and, and I'm joking. We're not mad at the county. I'm just having fun. They're stealing. They're stealing one of our, our great ones here. But, um, but Scott, get, uh, line of duty death drill. Okay, um, the, the 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 book report drill, as I, I as we call it. I mean, what what benefits have you seen? You were talking about what happened with having the Dallas guys come out, and that this started out to be a 
short-term project and has grown into something much more. And, and the number one rule is, you know what, as much as we need to really seriously look at what the cause was and really go and say, look, sorry guys, but this, this was a screw-up, the rule is we don't bash anybody. We just look at it, we try to learn from it. But what have you seen benefits-wise since you've been doing them here? Well, I mean, you and I both know. I think we have one, if if not more, members that are alive today, boss, because because oh, of the uh, the absolutely. line of duty death drill. And uh, I, I think we see those guys; they're understanding on their own terms how these things are happening. And again, it's 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 personal. It, they're they're doing the research, and we both know one of the best ways to learn things is is to teach it. So so these guys are doing the research. They're putting together the programs. They're presenting it to their peers. And, and that's going to stay in their mind. But they're seeing that we're really not finding any new ways to, to really kill firefighters, unfortunately. And we're seeing some reoccurring themes in how firefighters are dying. A lot of times it's basics. So when you go out and you develop a training program on the basics, there's a direct correlation between what we're training on and what's going on in the real world and, unfortunately, how we've lost some brothers and sisters. And, I, you know, you really can't find a better way to motivate firefighters to train when they see that, hey, this, this could, could save my life. Well, and it involves. It brings back, which we should be doing a lot more of, and that's, I always say, you know, playing soldier, playing Marine is, is, is the tactics and strategy part of it because you have to discuss that when you're talking about, you know, a lot of what, what went on. And, and I think, you know, one of the cases we had here is it didn't even necessarily involve a structural fire. It involved a... Uh, an officer who had, who had had a heart attack at a, at a scene, which gave one of our guys the ability to recognize something be, and, and get it taken care of at a fire before it, it, it turned into something much more, you know, obviously serious and, and worse. But um, it, it, I think, Scott, it's just an awakening. Guys, you know, you look at it, you go, all right, we have that same building here. We had that same fire. And, and you, you, you sat through John's go with John Salker. We talk about the links in the chain he uses, mm-hmm. you know, the line of duty desk. We were we were like one link away, you know, from something bad happening. And sometimes the younger firefighters don't see it. That's why they need the trained officers and the chiefs to sit there and go, oh, wait, wait a minute, one more step, and this is what's going to happen. And I think you, were, you 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 said you've had rookies, rookie firefighters stand up and teach a line of duty death book report drill. I mean, how you want to talk about impacting someone's career? Absolutely. Oh my God! And, they've, and their captains have stood back behind them and supported them and everything else. Um, it's it's an incre- and that's just one one of the freebies. I mean, uh, there's so many other drills that you have the guys doing here in, in classes that it, you know it, it, there's so much stuff online. I mean, right? You go to Fire Engineering's webpage, Scott. There's one more uh, out there, and this guy does a ton of work with fire engineering. Uh, he's he's the train officer. He's it's Brian Ward from Gwinnett County, Georgia, Gwinnett County Fire Academy, and he does a ton of stuff with fire engineering. Um, and, you know, he's he's got a website that they're doing that, you know, he's got, it's chock full of PowerPoints. Um, uh, the website's, uh, was a fire service, uh, safety, leadership, and training. Uh, I think it's uh, www.fireservice, uh, fire services. Um, let me back up. I said that wrong. Fire service, um, SLT. SamLincolnTom.com. So Fireservice SLT.com. PowerPoints, all kinds of things. I mean, you've been sharing information with people from all over the country when they call. I mean, it's out there, isn't it? If you really want it, there, there's no reason. Uh, there's no reason I can think of why you can't put together good quality training for for almost zero dollars with the technology and the information that's out there. And you know, because the fire service is the way that it is, just about everybody will share and is willing to give up stuff that's you know, unless they're making their living teaching it. But everybody wants to help everybody and that's a great thing about what we do in, in the brother and sisterhood. So it's absolutely out there. I mean I, I go to the internet, I, I the the fire engineering community to me is is beautiful, and I use it all the time. And get on there and talk about mentoring. How do you get off of it? I, yeah, I, I, yeah, you're right. It's a, it yeah. If if you knew how much time I spent on, you'd probably ask me to go to the colony. But it's it's a <laughs> no. It's it's a great thing, and again, it it makes it very personal. I can get on there, and somebody that I may never meet in person now, I'm having a conversation and sharing ideas with. And, and it becomes a very personal experience, and, and that's, it's a great thing. It's a great tool. Scott, it's FDIC on steroids. Because Absolutely. The biggest complaint, like Chief Halton said, was 
I, you know, there's too many good classes to choose from. I wanted to see Thompson, or I wanted to see Salka, or I wanted to see Dave McGrail, I wanted to see, you know, or Eddie Buchanan. And then you go to that thing, and there's photos and videos and reports, and there's PowerPoints, and there's forums, and there's stuff, and it's just like, holy crap, man. And the famous words of Frank Barone, it's like, <laughs> you know, hot, I, I, you know, it's, and every day there's like a different group created, and you go, well, I got to join that one. I got to. There's one on on, on uh, trade and stuff. I had to join that one. I'm an antique collector. I'm like, I mean, pa- I mean, it's just it's unbelievable. It, it's unbelievable how much stuff is on there. And, and Scotty, you and I have both talked about before this. If people ever say it, you know, put down the New York Times, Chicago Sun Times, or whatever, and make FireEngineering.com your morning newspaper. Absolutely. I mean. If, whether you have the support, right? Tell me if you if you agree. If you, you don't have to, you came here, and you know how much I love training along all aspects of the fire service. And I told you I want to give you everything I never got as as a train officer. You know, I, I had the experience of working for an incredible fire chief at Bedford Park, Bob Rubel, and I had the experience of working for a mutt. You know, you know what I'm saying, and and mm-hmm. and, and, I, and I'm very open about that. I wanted you to be able, even if I didn't, even if I said, "Sorry, Scott, no budget, no money." I want you to train a department. If you have the internet, right, and you have and you have a, a PowerPoint or a presentation type software program in your computer and a telephone, there's no reason. And, and and the passion and the desire to do it, there's no reason in the world why you can't have a good quality. I mean, that's 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 our program. Very very little is spent on internal training, but. Chief, you know, support from the top is very important. I can't imagine why a fire chief would not make training a priority in their organization. Well, that that blows me away. But and you know, Scott, you know, you and I've talked about that before, buddy. I mean, there's a there's a, there's a little over thirty thousand fire departments in the United States. There's some great chiefs and officers and firefighters. There's a few mutts that believe it or not. You know, it, 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 can you imagine? These are the same guys that are sending one rig to a structure fire mm-hmm. because they want to save fuel. Where they, maybe they should be cutting something. Maybe you know, go with their computer in their office a little bit longer, or <laughs> two more years in their fire chief's car before you start jeopardizing your guys' lives. Um, they're the ones that do that stuff. But even so, I mean, you know, it doesn't take that much. There are so many there are groups, like you said, and organizations. And, and I'll say it for you because I know you want to be politically correct. But when you say there's absolutely no reason, I, I've heard it come from you, and I say it openly. You know what? If you say that you don't have the means to train your people, if you don't have the resource to train your people, you're a lazy ass. And I have no other way to say, you know what? Every single freaking company officer needs to be training his people. You've heard Chief Salka, John Salka, said, if you're not training your people as an officer, you're not doing your job. And this stuff's there, Scott, right? Absolutely. You're either a lazy ass, as you put it, or you're so incompetent in your position that, that you don't have anything to offer or share. And, and it's going to be one of those two things. Otherwise... Why you can't find an hour or two? We're not talking five or six hours a day. We we get along and an hour or two of training a day here, and it works very well. It's comfortable. There's no we're excuse, and we're we're very busy. We got, and we do all the other things at the part. There's no excuse that you can make for not training an hour or two a day. And you know, and John has said it. The very first thing as a company officer was he got his training done. Very first, you know. Sorry, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna we get this all done. Get it, all right after we get the. The, the duties done here, everything else, the rigs check, we're doing our training first because we will find time for it. But to say there, there's nothing you can do, you know, we've talked about, you, you've got the guys, you mentioned Jerry Wells, one of our battalion chiefs here, mm-hmm. you know, the whole, remember the Sal drill, we call it Sal drill because of Sal Marchese, another article I, I owe Bobby, but, you know, the, we, I called it the Sal drill, and we are talking about calling it the straight level with the airbag drill, right? It can be pouring down rain, freezing cold, 10 feet of snow, thunderstorms, a million degrees outside, you, you keep a railroad tie or a little steel beam out back. You drag it into the you know, to the firehouse, into the the, the the apparatus bay. You get your airbags out, right? You get your you get your cribbing, you get your chocks, and you go. Okay, guys, here you go. You have to work as a team to raise that 17 inches or 16 inches or seven inches, you know, up off the ground. They go. Well, that's nothing. Well, no. Here's the trick. I'm going to take this glass of water. I'm going to fill the glass to about an inch from the top with water put it in the center of the railroad tie of the beam. You spill any water out of that, you just crushed your patient's legs. Exactly. Oh, exactly. my God, right? Doesn't that change the whole drill now? 
It does, and, and that drill is up on the community, by the way, Chief, for anybody who's looking for that under the, under the group drill so they can get all the details of that Chief Wells sat down with me, and we got that on there. Oh, that's awesome, because here, here's something. That's a freebie. That's yep. right there. It, crappy weather, it doesn't matter. There you go. And, and all of a sudden, and I, Scott, I walked out in the bay here the one day. They were on step ladders. They were like six feet in the air. I go, what are you doing? <laughs> we're not stopping at just like seven inches. I mean, we're, we're having a contest to see who could raise it the highest with all the cribbing without spilling the water. Great team-building drill. Oh. It's an awesome drill. And what happens next? Next thing I'm telling you, what, it happened here. Motorcycle under a car, guys wedged up underneath it. We got air, you know what I'm saying? Ray mm-hmm. Run, you, you're going to have that. You, you'll have that call right after it, and everybody's going to come out and boom, 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 like clockwork, and, and there's another freebie for you. Now, and, 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 and before we run out of time here, you're also... A, a, a good developer of, of folks and, and like I said of, of leaders you got some I mean being a good training officer means you got to have some good folks around you too and, it, and you mentioned company officers that believe in it and do their jobs but you've got a pretty good support team here um, that have done things for you and our training field and, and building props um, you've got people um, uh, mention a couple of guys you can you could turn to and say I, I need something built and they're welding and building and hammering and stuff well, you know, you've always referred to them as your go-to guys, and you know, everybody here. I, I can't say enough about the the support that I've got for the training programs that I've tried to do, and it's the guys that make it happen. But you know, uh, Jerry Wells when he was riding the truck, to, and and John Ashman and and Seth Taylor and, and all of these. I mean, Jeremy Jones, Mark Murphy, those guys who who went down and built the the flat roof prop, and you know, they came to me and wanted a five hundred dollar welder. Now we could have went through all the the. Made him jump through all the hoops of saying, "What do you need this for?" What do you, we bought it for him, and and you you buy it for him, and it, it will happen. They they built the the flat roof prop, the forcible entry doors, they they improved the burglar bars, they do maintenance on the flashover container. So for a five hundred dollar investment, the guys want to be down there. That they have pride in that. They know that that's where we're going to train, and and they want to want to keep it up to to date and and be able to use it. And it, I mean, we're talking about building a a a. a, a, a pitch roof out there we we added the uh the handover prop uh, uh penny uh david pennington one of our driver engineers got donated an entire electrical overhead electrical system that we have as a prop for identification i mean which everybody thinks is real when yeah, everybody there. thinks it's real and, and they don't get guy. near it <laughs> they're close to the wire dude it's not connected enough to but oh you know but I mean, it's just you know, uh, Seth Taylor put together the the, the the recent heavy rigging class we did did bringing bringing Jay Coon in. It was a huge success, and it's it's just amazing the things you can do when guys understand that to be successful in this job, we got to train, we got to be prepared, we got to do it. That's the only way we're going to be successful. And and once the guys realize that, great things happen. And and it, uh, you know, like you, very little of it is is me. It's I get the dollars. I come in and I explain to you, keep you up to date, keep up to date on what's going on and the guys make it happen and without those the buy-in from those guys you know you're going to have some some problems well and you mentioned something and, and i'm not saying this for any other reason that i i really despise micromanagers now there's a time when you need to supervise people a person maybe a little bit more than you would someone else because of a performance problem but i don't have enough time you know what i'm saying there's a whole bunch of things that we have to have people in those positions and you said you could turn to seth taylor you could turn to Jonesy, you can turn to these guys at Penny and go, I need something done. They can get it done. That's part of building a good team, putting good people, good players around you to make things happen. But, Scott, you know, Skip Coleman just posted the the next uh, roundtable question is, you know, when technology fails you, when your thermal am- imager goes dark, when your pass device doesn't activate, when you're ready, what do you do? How are you training your people to work around that? You know, here we go again. How are you training your people? Everything, right? Everything we do. And, and you, you, you know, we've said this before, when you investigate the line of duty debt, uh, debts, you sit there and you go, okay, and I'm not, you know, uh, just sit there and go, uh, all right, and one of the last ones for me was, all right, now that we've went through the whole day's events, now that we went through everything that happened, what time the fire was received, who responded, who, where the lines were stretched, who did what, blah, 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 all that stuff, okay, great. Now let me see this individual's training folder for an individual who, who became disoriented in a building, ran out of air, and, and died, to have to go back 11 years to find any physical evidence that they drilled with an SCBA is shameful. And, and, and like you said earlier, all everything we do, right, everything we do comes back to 
how, how well we trained. Every May Day, every part, right? I mean, everything, and, and training on the basics, and being comfortable, and being able to recall that stuff when you need it. And and a lot of times, Chief, it's it's not always that that person's fault who gets in trouble. It's the leadership, the officers, the training guy, who sh- who should have been making sure that 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 firefighter was getting properly trained. We share a huge responsibility in in that firefighter success, and we need to realize that. Well, and I tell people all the time, if you're a training officer and you have, you know, oodles of time on your hand, you're not doing your job. <laughs> That's the truth. Busy, oh, my God. I know how busy you are, and I know when I was there, it's like, and, you know, and it's a hard thing, Scott, and I think it comes back to something you said earlier about attitude. You know, when you're in there busting your ass doing work, and you know the guys might be in there chilling, or you walk in there and they might be sitting in a recliner kind of stuff, you know what I'm saying? Um you got to learn to get past that because a, a lot of guys will, you know, it's like, God, yeah, you know, I, I maybe, you know what, your whole thought, your whole reason for wanting to get into training was to make a difference. Um, where are you going to have the greatest impact? You know, and, and it's going to be in, in training and building the future department and, and uh, keeping people safe. So, it, you know, you got to get past that. Well, I'm kind of jealous that they seem to be doing a little bit less than I am right now. It seems like I'm always working extra hours. I'm here late, and they're well. You know what? It, life's full of choices, and you, you make that choice to step up. And and you know, again, we've got an incredible, some incredible folks doing some great things with our different divisions here. Um, if you're not training your people, you're just set your, your folks up for disaster. That's exactly yeah. right. Well, hey, buddy, I appreciate you being on the show, and and. Uh, uh, we're we're going to look at wrapping things up here. Um, Scott, I, I can't thank you enough, buddy. Um, uh, I, I know uh, uh, your last day with us is December 31st. Um, I'm, I'm excited for you. I know I'm going to get to see you at fires both here and there. You Absolutely. Here with your folks because the county is, is, like I said, all these other departments around us we already mentioned, you can't tell the players without a scorecard. We work so well together. And, um uh, I'm proud of you. I'm excited for you. I, like I said, I'm excited for the for the for the men and women there. Um, thank you for everything you've done here. Um, you've done some incredible things, to officer development wise. Um, you've done some great, wonderful things with our young firefighters. Um, people know you. They that you get back to them. Um, you know, one one last thing here. We we've, we've talked a lot about uh, some different organizations. How you get things done. Um, if if you could take, give me 60 seconds. And uh, describe to me if I was going to let me. I'm going to ask Scott Thompson this question. What do you think of uh, of the fools and, and, and their impact on the fire service, uh, Chief? It's a great organization. I think it's a very sincere organization. It's it's about our tradition, our heritage. It's about the brotherhood. It's about the future. It's about training. It's about being successful in this job and and making the whole fire service uh, better. I I I thank you for introducing me to the fools and i just uh you know i i hope there's a long-term success and anything i can do to ever help the organization i certainly will well and these this is an organization made up of men and women that are that i tell people are providing good quality training and 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 protecting the traditions and privileges and rights of firefighters uh, all across north america but buddy i can't thank you we've been visiting with scott thompson um, and I'm going to say it, the Division Chief for the Louisville Fire Department over Training Health and Safety for, well, as of right, the taping the show for a few more hours. <laughs> and uh, moving on happily, uh, uh, you, you know, again, you know, I'm, I'm, how can you not be happy for, for one of your folks that, that's, that's going to take a, a job like that? Uh, it's, it's tough and sad here, but, man, you're going to be right next door to us. Uh, uh, Scott Thompson, the new chief of the colony, Texas. Um, and you probably don't have it yet, Scott. Um, uh, you know, unless people want, you know, maybe they could do it through me. If you don't have an email set up yet or whatever, if you have a way that folks can contact you, let's give it up here now, email-wise or whatever. If not, um, you know, what they could do is maybe give me an email or shout, and I can always forward them to you until you, you get set up there because I know you're in transition right now for a few days. Or go to the Fire Engineering Community site. There, there you go. Scott Thompson. Oh. And- <laughs> <laughs> LFD Chief 164 at Yahoo. That's my personal one. And, and boss, thank you for everything. Uh, you define mentoring, and you're certainly a mentor of mine. And uh, Bobby, thank you for everything. And, and I, I'm honored to be on the show. We love well, you, Scotty. I appreciate it. Uh, appreciate uh, Chief Halton uh, stopping by today. Um, you know, it's it's uh, 
He's doing some incredible things with fire engineering that never stops. Hey, uh, like I said, uh, folks, we've been visiting with Scott Thompson, uh, the new chief of the colony, Texas. Uh, you're going to see him at FDIC again. Uh, if you want to see any other stuff he's doing or talk to him, call him, email him, get on the fire engineering community page at fire engineering's website. Um, all different ways to get a hold of Scott, a wealth of information. Um, you know, I appreciate him being on the show. Uh, he's the kind of guy uh, like Tom Freeman and John Salka and Jay Kuhn. You could, you could spend eight hours with them and not get through all the information you want to get through because there's so much great stuff just to be able to pick that brain. But uh, appreciate Scott being here. Um, again, if you're uh, any comments, any thoughts, any ideas, um, throw them this way. You can get a hold of me at rick at prideandownership.com. Um, or through uh, the city of Louisville. Uh, email is posted there as well. Um, and as we always do, we always end this show with two very important words, and that's be safe.